I pull up on them wherever they. Oh, you pull up at? Okay. Yeah, okay. I be on them. I be in their hoods, okay. wherever they from, or I uh, all the interviews. Yeah, I go to them, or I be in the studio, or or they studio, or different studios doing them. Okay. Different rap studios or apartment complexes, neighborhoods, blocks, corners, backyards, wherever. Okay, Jordo, you ain't doing too good. I'm gonna grab that hoe for you real quick. Ace time shit, man. Yeah, check me out. Yeah. It's urban politicians and I'm out here on the mission. Stack my bread up and cop a new expedition. Fuck an expedition, might do an escalade. I'm gonna keep grinding till a nigga well paid. Nigga run up, he gets sprayed with the raid. Drink only alcohol, no hater raid. Whip a sock of shades, fresh type of fade. Look in my head and I got a lot of ways. Nigga play a maid and I'm never falling off. I in Houston, Texas, man, I represent the know. All right, welcome everybody. This is the Common Interest. And who we have here with me today, we got Ant from Urban Politics. Politicians, right? Yeah, Urban Politics Urban TV, Politics man. TV. Um, sure. But yeah, like so, we got started off with hit us with a rewind. That's when you tell us a little bit about yourself, yeah. your brand, and how you got here today. Yeah, uh, shit, man. Urban Politicians TV. That's everything. That's the that's the brand. That's the logo. That's what we trying to press, uh, press and punch on. That's the that's the lifestyle. That's everything that come with it. We politically inclined. You know what I'm saying? All that type of shit like that. But uh. Uh, I'm from Ace Town, Northside, Greens Point area for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Really been over there pretty much my whole life. So, uh, you know, stayed in really all over that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? From the apartments to the houses, but mostly in the houses. Started out early in apartments like Imperial Valley, okay. things of that nature. You know, North Borough a little bit. Then oh, yeah, probably, yeah, like, probably like probably uh, like towards the end of elementary, like fourth grade, got into like, you know, the uh, Lincoln Greens and the Cannon Parks and things like that. So I'm ripping Greenspoint all the way now. So, but I fuck with, I ripped the whole ace time though. Course, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man, I, been, I really just jumped into this podcast shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the beginning, it was a podcast, not mm -hmm. strictly YouTube. Okay. You know, I've been a big fan of rap, mm -hmm. hip hop, the whole culture. I grew up in a household that never kept me from rap music. Like, yeah. I've been listening to cussing rap music my whole when other kids on the street or other kids at school could listen to cuss words and music or yeah. watch dirty movies or uh, rated R movies and yeah. shit. I was one that could. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy because my tea lady was strict growing up. Uh -huh. You know, what I'm saying she applied pressure when it comes to them uh, to them rules in that household. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But she had it like, hey, you know what not to do. Exactly. You know what not to say. Right. You know you don't say this in front of no adult. So they let me watch whatever, listen to whatever. So I grew up, you know, right. UGK, Pimp C, everything like that. And now she, I just always been a fan of the music, everything from West Coast, Too Short, to, you know, East Coast, whole Biggie, anything on the East Coast, I was with it. You know, Nas, AZ. So this this rap shit really embedded into me as a fan. Right. It's more than just music to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we started the podcast and she, did that did like 40 episodes that's still on apple music though urban politicians podcast apple whatever you know whatever apple podcast app okay yeah yeah that's still up there they can go get that it's 40 episodes of that i think the quality get good about episode 15 yeah <laughs> we had to figure out the kinks on that motherfucker nah, that's a process but if you type in youtube urban politicians tv you ain't gonna be able to keep up with all the content it's over 1200 videos on that motherfucker from new uh hip-hop news to uh, interviews, to vlogs and studios, concert performances, all that shit. Man. All that shit. So that's what it is. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, what out of um? So you said you had like a, a love for the hip hop. Yeah. And it just started with what made you, I guess, want to, I guess, go more the interview route, like interview people and just be more of like a a media outlet with your stuff instead of more um, like I like maybe going the artist route or okay. just being like maybe a manager or something or a and R person. Well see eventually I do wanna get to them type of levels where okay. I'm more adapted into the business but I I always want to live a rap lifestyle but I never wanted to be a rapper because that fame? Nah, it wasn't even that man. I, I, I just looked at it like I ain't come up trying to be no rapper. Uh -huh. 
and I would freestyle. Like I freestyle, I could freestyle the drop of the dive with yeah, the ace time. Fr- yeah, yeah, on the yeah. ace time, on the ace <laughs> time tilt. How we freestyle, I lingo. I could freestyle the drop of a dive. Yeah, but I kind of felt like man, before when I was growing up. It, it was like you had to be you was either a super gangster rapper you had to be a gangster or you was like a a bow wow yeah <laughs> and, you know what i'm saying or yeah. a little zane yeah. or uh you know what i'm saying what a little yeah. romeo so i would i felt like man the way i was brought up of course i'd have seen the worst of the worst in the street shit mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying nigga that been through some shit and, right. you know we gonna get it that on camera you know what i'm right. saying but yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. like I feel like, man, I ain't did enough to get out here and talk about the shit that these niggas were talking about. Right. So, you know, the Big Sons, the Drakes, the Kanye's, them came when I was in high school, but I wasn't already trying to be no rapper. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it was kind of like, uh, I didn't, you know, we ain't had, we ain't know nobody who had no studio like that. Right, right. You know, I had partners that had little studios and did their little thing with their music, but it was like, nah, I don't want to be no rapper. So she did. Out of nowhere, man, you know, I'm just seeing all this content. I'm on YouTube every day. I, I was already reading all the magazines and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, man, bro, I need to get my own shit. Right. You know, I need to have my own voice in this culture. How the fuck I did been to a hundred hip hop concerts? I didn't been to uh, so many artists shit at House of Blues. Right. I didn't been to motherfucking Warehouse Live from Currency to Nipsey, Don Kennedy, all these artists. She keep. I'm at everybody show at House of Blues at uh. At Warehouse Live, man, standing up. Right. For I, I'm like, man, I'm spending money. Why I'm not a nigga that's in this culture? Right. And I know I can. I got a voice that can be heard. So I was like, man, this shit could be a business also because I love it. Right. I do this shit for free. So that's why Urban Politicians came in because talking is politics and expressing your beliefs. Most do. I ain't got no journalism degree. Yeah, I'm doing it from an urban standpoint. You don't even need that. Yeah, no, you don't, you yeah. don't. See, we politicking right now. Exactly. But see, my shit urban. Yeah. Don't come in here and try to critique my fucking words. I'm letting you know what it is right out the gate. Exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, Straight take up. Take it how it is, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that's a, man, that's what's up, though. No, yeah. I definitely feel it because uh, you go on all the shows and paying, and you know, get in and stuff, and, yeah. like, you bring a camera in there, and you talk to a couple of people in there, something yeah. like that. That's your content right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... No, I definitely feel it. And man, I'm gonna tell you like this too. I ain't, when I was going to all them shows, mm. I, I ain't had no camera. I was just going as a yeah, fan. Yeah, nah, for real. That's, you know that's what, what I used to do. This yeah, I was go, I was out there as a fan in the crowd, yep. nigga, standing up for two, three hours, just while, enjoying while, myself. You yeah, know what I'm watching this shit. Like I wasn't even doing that. You know, because like, you don't like. It's different when you start kind of getting inside the industry. You start looking at stuff different. Um, because yep. if you're looking at a fan standpoint. That's all you gonna know. Like yeah. you're just looking at that, like wow, I'm enjoying this person performing. I love the music, sure. and that's all you paying attention to. But like once you kind of say like more, want to like uh, get gears toward more business oriented, yeah. and you start going to stuff like that, you're like, man, I can get some content out of this. You know sure. what I'm saying? Sure. And it's just like, all right, if I'm gonna spend my money on this, I can definitely go and enjoy myself and support. But let me get something out of it as well, because they they doing something, and I um. Like these other people coming in and do the exact same thing, so sure. yeah, I definitely feel it. That's dope. Yeah. Um. So what? Well, um. For the people, I just want to let you like talk to them about like why. Uh, what made you switch from the going doing the podcast to going over just switching over to strictly YouTube? Well, see, um, I started when I first started. I had my my uh my partner with me, mm-hmm. and I had uh two of my cousins. You know what I'm saying? The okay. podcast easier with a team. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you need to, I feel like you kind of need a team with that for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know how to do all this. I'm a computer. I'm I'm, I'm slow when it comes to com- computers, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Editing it and, and, and mixing and, uh, you know, engineering the sound and yeah. all that. That's, the, that's what I got him for. I yeah, can't. I hear it ain't that hard, but I yeah. just ain't got it. I can't yeah. do it. So You have to literally sit in front of the computer and spend like hours. Hours, and I just ain't yeah. on that. So yeah. it was like, man. Uh, my, they, that's the, they all love. That's all love with all of them. They all my niggas and my family for mm-hmm. life. But they kind of had a different vision of what you know. what I'm saying what it was mm-hmm. when I came in this shit. I told myself, nigga, it might be two, three years before you make a dollar. Yeah, yeah. And I was cool with that. Right. I was like, nigga, I, you got to go through that to it's own your grind. own shit. You it's know what I'm saying? It's grind. a slow ass grind. Yeah. So I, I, I was with that, and I think that they kind of was looking more so. They was ready to make money in three, four months. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. And I and I knew it wasn't gonna happen. They wanted <laughs> yeah. to kind of like press up shirts. You know, like bro, in my head, I'm like, bro, ain't nobody gonna buy no shirts. Mm-hmm. 
Ain't nobody gonna buy no shirts from us, bro. They gonna tell us in our face they gonna buy them. They gonna, but when it comes time to go in their pocket and pull that thirty out, they not finna spin. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, we gotta get hotter. We gotta right. get going. We gotta work. You gotta get, uh, get some got, credibility. Get some credibility. Put yeah. it in their face. Then it's like, okay, I'll be a hating ass nigga if I don't shop with this nigga now. Nah, you right. know what I'm saying? So right. that's what I was. Uh, I was with the punching on that shit. Like, let's punch this shit in and go get it. Right. So, you know, we started like I could just see, man. You know. They kind of was not really on it like that. So yeah. I just kind of took matters to my own hands. And I just started hitting the streets probably like last April. Mm -hmm. Heavy. Like last April. I did a couple of interviews here and there yeah, after the on. podcast. But last April, that's when I turned up and went crazy. I just said, you know what, fuck it. We going, I'm pulling up on whoever trying to get an interview. If they got something to talk about on camera, let's get it in. Right. So that's why I've been with it like that. So that made that transition. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. I definitely seen. Um, I seen a couple. Well, I seen your interview with uh, with Cole from Backstreets. Oh yeah, I just did that one with yeah. her the other day. That was mo what Monday. We just did that yeah. Monday. Yeah. I was talking about um the old one. You oh, know, well, she interviewed me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that yeah. was. I uh, seen that one too though. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that was a few months ago. Shout out to Backstreets with Cole. Yeah, she rocking. She the hardest. I'm the I'm the rawest man <laughs> in the city. Backstreet's call the hardest in the city. I'm the rawest in the motherfucking oh, city. That I fuck that. Y'all definitely killing shit. Yeah. Um, y'all be knocking them interviews out, and I, yeah. I like how y'all interview too. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, it was interesting because y'all was talking about uh, one of the videos I saw when y'all was talking together. Y'all was talking about like just different podcasters and everything. Yeah. And how just everybody's um kind of just hopping on their wave now. Yeah. Um, uh, why do you think that is? Do you think it's uh, it's because people just see like. The money into well quote unquote money because it's a wave it ain't even about the money yeah honestly it's money it's money in the shit when you on they level yeah you ain't getting the money now but it's on their money it's on, on they levels it is they got sponsors right exactly they ain't got to do nothing see i want to make this very clear man and take they name off this this urban politician big ant about to talk this shit i don't want this to be nothing to do with them <laughs> These motherfuckers ain't got to do nothing but show up and cut the motherfucking camera on. Oh, no, facts. <laughs> no, no, not cut the camera on. I'm tripping. They ain't got to do nothing but show up and sit down. They ain't got to do no editing. They ain't got to do no uploading. They ain't got to cut on no mics. Nah, All they doing is cutting the lights on in the room. The motherfuckers might already be on for them on that. Honestly. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers ain't got to do shit. So they get the pot. And I'm not knocking them. I ain't hating yeah. them. But they got a whole production team. Behind it's like nigga, they ain't got to do none of that yeah. shit. So it's like, hey, I respect what you're doing because I want to see everybody win. It's enough money in it for everybody to eat. Mm -hmm. You just got to find your way to eat. Yeah. But when you really ain't got no passion for it, and you already was a rapper, you already was something else, and you just seeing as a wave, it's like, damn, bro, you need to kind of, you know, go get interviewed, my nigga. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't go do interviews. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you kind of like watering the shit down. Yeah. Because no, the man. wave hit in 2017. No, and yeah. I don't give, and I, man, me, I don't give a motherfucker. I'm going to say it like this. All these niggas that came out with podcasts in 2017, I seen 2017, they was all just wave riding. They weren't really watching podcasts. They just seen, oh, mm -hmm. niggas doing podcasts. We finna jump on this wave just like we was on a shirt selling wave, just like we was on this wave and this wave, yeah. every Instagram wave. We was on the tennis shoe wave at one point. Right. Niggas go <laughs> wave to wave, dick to dick, click to click. That's what the <laughs> fuck going on. So, I'm no like, bro, facts. I already seen all the motherfuckers start. They shit ended after three weeks yeah. or a month. I stuck with that shit, man. Yeah, you got to like, be consistent. I stuck with this shit. I'm still in this shit. And yeah. I ain't stopping till this shit go up. You I know feel what I'm saying? I feel it. Now, I definitely, um, from you just talking just about the podcast in general, yeah. I can tell, like, you was in it for the long haul. Like, you Fucking was in right. it for you trying to do this shit. Because it's, right. um, because I, I didn't get into podcasts really until maybe 20. 18 I want to okay. say because I heard about a couple and I seen like a couple interviews here and there but yeah. I didn't really just like really get into that shit until like afterwards but um, I already knew I wanted like I had an idea that what I wanted to do because I was more like gear oriented to like a, I wanted to make like a radio station that's what okay. I really wanted to do but then you know getting into like 97.9 yeah. they like they put with their new girl Young Jazz on there and she's the first newest person like in years yeah. and even still like again she's a female she's um she attractive and Shout out to Young Jay. I right? seen her. Yeah, she's tight. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, but so it's hard to get just get up in that field. Oh, yeah, you ain't lying. So yeah. you know. And then to get even syndicated, that takes a whole lot. Yeah. Like, so it's just uh, I was like, yeah. all right, I, I want to I always had a love for the underground. And I was like, I need this something I want to do. My homie, uh shout out to uh Artie. What is it? Artie the homie? Artie the homie. Yeah, I couldn't think of it was Artie the homie, Artie Kid. But Artie the homie from Triple D. Um 
he was, we was talking about, I remember he was walking back trying to, uh, we just bought, got like a 20 for some green. Okay. Came back and we was talking about the shit. And I was like, yeah, you know, I want to do the radio stuff. And he was like, yeah, it'd be cool, you know, put our music, because he was a rapper too. Okay. And put our music on there and everything. He was like, yeah, you can start a podcast. And I was like, what's that? He was like, it's like a radio station, basically, but he's just talking. And I was like, where? Okay. And that, and that was like maybe, I want to say five years ago. Okay. And I just put that, I put that mug on the back burner because I was trying to make music myself. But after a while, I was like, yeah, this not on um, the music scene. I, I felt like I was, me as a rapper, I'm not at the point where I can really deliver the content that I want to deliver. So I was like, okay, I need to find another avenue because this nine to five shit that ain't really working. Yeah. But also, I, need, I do want to show my love and passion for the industry and the, uh, not the industry, more just the underground scene and just the music scene in general. Yeah. Uh, and here we are. But no, nah, it's definitely a difference when you had a love for it and you don't have a love for it. And yeah. just, y'all gotta stop doing that nasty shit, man. Yeah, do the do the shit y'all love. Don't do this shit just for the sake of. Yeah. Like getting a buck, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? yeah. Nah, it's go, man. When you love it, you gonna do it for the free. Then the payout yeah. gonna be bigger, man. Yeah. And I gotta give a big shout out. I'm gonna get the real my inspirations, man. I want to show them, you know, gratitude because this the first I think podcast. This is this ain't my first time being interviewed. First podcast. I gotta keep it all the way solid. Solid. Give a shout out to Joe Button. He said on one of his episodes after, cause I was already watching Joe Button shit, tax stone shit, and rap radar shit. Well, listening to them in the crib while mm -hmm. I'm cooking and cleaning up and shit. I was out there rocking with that shit. But Joe Budden has said something on his that stuck with me, and I still use it to this day when they kick, when they, you know, uh, fired them from Complex, if, if you want to call it a firing or whatever they whatever they call it, weak ass <laughs> shit they did. Uh, <laughs> Joe Budden made the comment, man, right now, you know, we in a lost leader phase. Mm. His boy Parks had said the word first, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like, you know, people got to understand what Lost Leaders is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's like, basically, you putting the work in now, you spending money right now or losing money because you know the return going to come from something else yeah. or the return is going to come later. Right. So Joe Budden, you know, emphasized, hey, they was losing money doing that Joe Budden podcast for four years for the free. Yeah. Every time you, you know you putting gas in your car, you losing money. They say like they had to drive like two hours just to get to their spot wherever they record. Sometimes because they traffic got yeah. that east coast, like they losing money to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. did it week for week after week after week. They did eventually get to start touring before they got the deal. Right. But they 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 but they put the motherfucking work in, so that shit stuck with me. Yeah. That's that's a big little inspiration. Nip, uh, Nipsey Hustle, a big inspiration. You know, just hearing that nigga talk. It's like, man, this shit really about who ain't gonna quit. Yeah. If you got a game plan and you stick with it, it's gonna happen. And you, and you know, you're gonna go through the ups and downs, the bumps and the bruises, the motherfucking fall offs and bounce backs and uh, setbacks. But whoever stay with they shit, that's the motherfucker who gonna win. So that's I gotta right. give a big credit to Nipsey. And then, you know, I also gotta shout out, you know, uh, Money Man. I got to shout out that nigga because his work ethic so crazy. I be like, I see that nigga just keep dropping, keep dropping music. I'm like, man, I got to be like that with this. Yeah. Every every video or interview I drop, that's a song. Yeah. These nigga dropping 60 official tracks a year, 70 official yeah. tracks a year. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, I got to keep up with them. Like, I got to keep dropping shit yeah. because after that one song, they watch that one song, they want, they want some more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They might watch that this weekend. They want some more shit next weekend. So, you know, Money Man. That's why I say, nigga, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the YouTube interviewer. Compare me to Money Man, Wayne, and Gucci, and I ain't saying like the, I'm not saying the, the my content is where theirs is at, even though my shit is the rawest. I'm not saying I'm on a level as far as like status or nothing like that. I'm saying they work ethic. How them niggas is gonna keep punching shit in your face? Yeah. I'm with that. Like that's how I'm coming. So they, they really like all that shit is like really inspiration and Nipsey. I had put on my list, man. I made a list before Nipsey died in September of last year. Mm -hmm. You know, he died in March, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I had put a list of my top 10 people in my playlist. Money Man was number one, Nipsey Hustle was number two. Uh -huh. And it's just because that shit is like motivation to me to get out here and go get it. Yeah. You know, so it's just like that, man. So shout out to all the Nick people doing podcasts and everything. Oh yeah, man. it's definitely a slow grind. If you're doing this shit, yeah. and you're sticking with it. You definitely just love doing it. And that's <laughs> why I tapped in with y'all, bro. That's why I came it. out here. I said, okay, y'all starting up. 
y'all working. I'm going to give y'all a little game that I didn't got on YouTube. I don't mind sharing the game for the people. Cause I know y'all take y'all shit serious. Y'all got a whole motherfucking setup over here. Y'all got a whole camera, whole laptop, whole this and that. You took the time out and then you do business with me. Yeah. I, you just did some business and, and you got to respect the business. But I don't give a fuck what level he on, man. So that's what people got to stay. Y'all got y'all backdrop. Yeah. So y'all stick with this shit and don't give up. Y'all yeah, going to be them niggas, man. Oh, yeah. Most deaf. Most Bro, deaf. they going to sleep on you in the beginning. I yeah. seen that shit. Oh, I yeah. seen it with everybody. Nobody took me serious at first, but I stuck with it. And it's some people, they taking me serious. They just don't want to hit them buttons. Yeah. Nah, because people see it, but people don't want to, they want to subscribe. They don't want to subscribe until like, Oh, everybody else start catching yeah. on too. Like, oh, okay, so yeah. everybody else start fucking with them too. Let me go ahead and like, I'm yeah. like, yeah, I've been supporting them since they uh first started dropping their videos, yeah. but sh that shit ain't showing in the views and the subscription. Yeah, like, nah, you know, all that shit like that. But you know they, what I'm saying? But see, the thing they gotta realize. I don't give a motherfucker. Right. I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck, anyway. with you, fuck with me. <laughs> I don't care what kind of car you driving. I don't care what type of jury you got. I don't care how many hit records you got. If you got something to offer, and I feel like you serious at that Let's moment, you know. let's rock, nigga. Exactly. I'm coming. Exactly. So straight up, that's how we going. That's how you got to do it, man. Shit, ain't nobody else gonna help us out. Bro, that shit. Everything is whack until it's no longer whack. They used to say Joe Budden was whack for a podcast. Oh yeah. They used to say all them niggas. They used to clown Tax Stone. You're a podcaster. Yeah. That's now that these niggas bossed up getting these checks from Spotify, nigga, yeah, you right, rap niggas, podcast. you rap niggas can't even get them checks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Y'all can't even get them type of checks. He's still whack because he doing podcast. Hell nah, that nigga hustling. Nigga. That nigga has an option to be like, yeah, I'm not going to do music anymore. I don't yeah. want to do that shit. He's we like, hustling, I'm sticking doing this podcast Man. and I'm good. Like, he yeah. got his own shit. He do the pull-up interviews exactly. and everything. Urban Politician TV, this shit ain't stopping at interviews either. This is just a way for me to get my voice heard and get in the dope. Facts. This shit going to the top. I ain't going to give y'all all the plans because yeah. <laughs> I know y'all motherfuckers want to try to put ceilings on niggas and shit yeah. and block a nigga. So, I'm going to just do that shit and show you. I ain't going to tell y'all about the shit. But people who fuck with me in close know where I'm taking this shit to. This end of this... this this uh, this uh, interview shit is just ground level startup for me to get my voice heard and get my eyes on me and then I'm taking it to the next level. This Look. shit ain't no five year shit. This shit gonna be for life for real. Oh yeah, that's a, uh that's one person. Um, it was uh I was watching Adam uh No Jumper oh with Adam and uh he was interviewing Big Boy yeah and that's what uh I I when I listened to him talk I was like bro this. It like that was like a um, motivation for me, yeah. uh, cause he was saying like any like business venture you do, yeah. it's a five year plan. Like yeah. it by the, like by five years you gonna be like get like you start seeing like the, the the fruition coming in and everything like that. Then after but that the problem for most people is making it to five years. Yeah. Most people start something up they can barely last one year. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So once you stay consecutive like uh, consistent, I mean, and uh, make it past that, and that by that point. If you're doing five years, you might as well just keep doing it. If you, yeah. It's no point in stopping at that point. Regardless. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You put so much time and effort into it, just keep with it. And again, like, it's the same thing. Like, prime example was that for that shit, the Joe Budden podcast. Yeah. They've been doing it for four. They just hit their fifth year. By the fifth year, yeah. they had that Spotify contract and everything. They're getting paid. Like, if they they show up, do recording, like you said, they get, they're getting a check for doing yeah. those two records. The two records a week, they come and talk for a couple hours. It's literally just kicking it with the homies, you know what I'm saying? Probably like, ticking. That's <laughs> literally what it is, that's what man. Doing, that's it. Man. That's all it is. And getting paid for that. Like, yeah. I yeah, I would never thought, like, you can really just get paid just some, for somebody to listen to you talk. Bro, they supposed to, bro, the podcast game supposed to be getting paid more than what it is oh, because yeah. the shit is streams. They just haven't found a way to get it all the way monetized. Yep. And then now, people ain't worried about getting it. All the way monetized, they just like, fuck it, we're going to get paid off the sponsors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I watch a lot of different shit. I'll be here all day naming shit. Of course, I watch No Jumper. Yeah. Of course, I watch Vlad TV. Of course, you know, uh, I watch, uh, like I said, I watch a lot of Drink Champs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I watch, Queen, I've been watching Queens Flip a lot lately. Uh, street Gangs, let me give a shout out to Street Gangs. Uh, street Gangs is a reason. He kind of gave me the idea. Say Cheese does that too, so I got to give that nigga his credit. But Street Gangs, him pulling up in the L.A. hoods, man, interviewing all the bangers. Oh, word. Like you know, Alex Alonzo. He okay. changed the street television, but he got a channel where he pull up and just got all that gang bang history in L.A. Okay. I'm I watch his up. shit. Uh, Aaron Foster had interviewed him on. Uh, I heard about his podcast. He, got a, he interviewed too. Alex Alonzo, bro. It's a great shit. Like the That's old shit. Good. Lit. You know what I'm okay. saying? So. That's what's up. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Have you uh, have you checked out Ti's podcast? 
Oh, I cl- I seen a couple of the clicks, a couple of the uh, clips of it. You know, okay. I haven't just sat down and tapped all yeah, the way into either. it. It's hard because they just got it on. Um, and then it's so much. It's so much like other shit. Cause I still got to create my shit, right. and I and I create a lot of content every yeah. week. If you don't know, if people don't know, I'm gonna keep some content in your yeah. face. So I got to cre- I can only click on so much. Right, shit, exactly. You know what I'm saying, yeah. so especially I, yeah, there's so much going around and stuff. Yeah. Man, it's hard to just absorb all that in. And yeah. You gotta still do with your content. Yeah, and then still support but other people's content. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Everybody got a phone. Oh yeah. And I, and I you I tell rappers y'all gotta have this same approach because I fuck with a lot of rappers too. Mm-hmm. And I ain't I ain't limited to just interviewing rappers. I interview everybody, other content creators, business owners, right. all that shit. You gotta be well around it. Got but you. like with rap, like I tell them, bro, everybody got in it. This is the day and age. Everybody got a, a smartphone. Mm-hmm. You see a homeless person with a smartphone, bro. Homeless people <laughs> got smartphones. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Your goal is to get as many of them phones as possible. These people got access to you. Yeah. You need all of them to click your shit and spend money with you. Yeah. You feel me? So that's another reason why I was like, man, I can do this shit, dog. Yeah. So I'm really on it punching, man, for sure. All you need is like 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. 30 seconds, you get that view, you get that stream, whatever sure. it is. YouTube it. hard as fuck. Yeah. Uh, that money, the way they, they might have to, they got to change that. They already, no, it was good. They fucked it up right when I got in it. Really? They fucked it up, yeah. Bro, these boys was making, man, them niggas were making 20, 30, 40,000 a month on YouTube, what? bro. Rick, like, no jumping all them. Cause he I, said it out his own mouth on one episode. I said, man, I used to make 40K a month off YouTube. Now I'm down to five. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Damn, like, that's that was a big killer. difference. Bro, they took all that shit out, bro. They cut all the ad revenue. And mm. I don't know who responsible for that. I threw it on because I seen your boy Leor go over there to YouTube. Who? Leor yeah, Cohen. Yeah. He's the one that invented the 360 deal. Mm. He was at 300. Mm. He left 300. Went over there to uh, YouTube music and I just start seeing that record label it's mentality. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they did it before him or after him. You know what I'm saying? They he came probably over. played a part into it. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like man, we can make because it's like, bro, we paying these people twenty thousand a month. They getting thirty, thirty thousand, twenty thousand. They ain't even leaving. Some of these people ain't even leaving their house <laughs> and they making eight k. Yeah, off of a video. They be shooting all their videos inside cars. And you stuff, never know. You know some people making eight k <laughs> off a of video. They like, man. Let's cut that down to 1K. What they going to do? What can they do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We own all this shit. Right. What would be y'all reason, y'all logical reason, if they been getting paid this long, this much money, and y'all still been able to be afloat and, and eat at YouTube, right. now y'all taking all the money now? Like, what the fuck? Right. But that's the game, bro. That's, yeah. that's, that, that's that capitalism and all that other little oh, extra greedy. shit. Yeah, very greedy. 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 American greed, yeah. man. Spread the wealth, bro. That's what, But that's going to happen to... Um, to the podcast industry, I feel like it's gonna get to a point where it's gonna they're gonna find a way so people can get more revenue from it. Yeah. Then after a while, they're gonna have to police it because yeah. too many it's too much of it going around right. because everybody's gonna want to start doing podcasts yeah. again. Like that's just like why everybody want to rap now is because okay, I can I pay twenty dollars, mm-hmm. I can put as many songs as I can put on Spotify and all mm-hmm. streaming platforms for a whole year. Yeah. Like why not make music? Yeah. And that's when you, that's the oversaturation. That's where that the dilute stuff. Content, man. Yeah, man. But but nah, man. Like like I tell people, bro. If, if you want to do this shit, bro, you can't even think about all that shit mm-hmm. because it's always gonna be ways to make money. Well, oh, fuck yeah. it. YouTube ain't making the money. Well, fuck it. We gonna pay. We gonna start creating our own shirts, our own hats, our own this. Yeah. And then motherfuckers on YouTube, I ain't set mine up. They got the Patreons where motherfuckers pay and support their people they listen to. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. If you get. 10 people to send you $3. You just made $30 to go on there and talk. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's other ways to make that paper, man. You just got to yeah. figure it out. But if you really got a passion for this content shit, man, get out here and do it. You know what I'm saying? Go grind. It, it, it's going to start feeling good once you... Because, oh, yeah. man, in the beginning, bro, I almost quit. I was actually quitting three times a week, dog. Damn. I used to quit three times a week. So, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you what got me out of that. Shout out to 42 Doug out of Detroit, man. I seen him say the same fucking thing in the interview. He like, man, I quit. I actually quit rapping three times a week because the nigga go hard on the rap shit. Uh-huh. But you know, man, you doing your most, you investing your all, that shit ain't coming. Yeah. So that nigga was like, man, I quit three times a week. I was that same nigga. Right. I used to quit three times a week for like 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh-huh. Then I'd be like, man, fuck this shit, I quit. I ain't doing this shit no more. Yeah. Then I'd pop right back into it like 30 seconds after that. Like, right. I'm with it. I'm, I'm stuck. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I, I knew I, I quit, but I say I quit, but I never stopped. Yeah. You feel me? I'm like, I ain't stopping, but it's just like. Because you have a passion for it. Yeah, I'm just like, man, why my shit ain't working, man? Why this rapper here don't want to fuck with me? Why this why this bitch ass nigga just left me on red? <laughs> why this bitch ass nigga just told me meet him up here and then show up? Right. Man, I want to fight these niggas now. <laughs> I want to, because I love this urban politician right. shit, nigga. Uh, like, I'm down to die for this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm down, to, I'm down to die for this shit. All in, so. I'm like, nigga, nigga, stand me up, nigga. Where the fuck that nigga at? Nigga, I'm finna beat his ass. Or I'm finna, if I, if I lose the fight, I'm finna shoot him. You know what I'm saying? I'm tripping, bro. Like, because yeah. I love this shit so get, much, dog. You get so invested in it, man. And that's just, man, yo. this shit. And they don't know that. So yeah. I be asking niggas, bro. I done had to call a few niggas. Niggas I'm close to and niggas I don't know. DM niggas. Hey, bro, you can have your opinion on my shit, bro. You can not like the content, mm -hmm. but don't do no disrespecting, bro. Right. Don't disrespect urban politicians, bro, because... I'm, when it come to that shit, I'm not mentally stable, bro. A nigga might spaz the fuck out over that shit, bro. So I be telling niggas, and I'm getting better. Yeah, nah. I'm getting better. 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 But I'm getting better. It's, I'm getting better. It's, but it's like what Eric about to say. It's like yeah. I'm sensitive about my shit. You know what I'm saying? Too. It's just like Me it's too. your baby. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I'm you push this from the ground up from it. You know, and it's like when, when somebody's when you putting the effort in. Like, all right, you reaching out to people, you going out, you spending hours like hitting people like, hey, trying to do this interview, yeah. like come through. All right, bet somebody come through for interview. We was just talking about the shit like before we pulled up, um, yeah. started the uh, camera, uh, turn the camera on. Yeah. But you know, somebody say, all right, we we'll do an interview. All right, bet you pull up, they don't show up. Yeah. You wasted your time. That could be somebody else. That's been some other content you could have yeah. had. Shit, right. if anything, shit, you could have stayed your ass in bed. You could have fucking went out, got some other money. You could have did something else. Like it's other things you could have been doing, for but. Sure. You wasting my time now. Now I'm really mad, like. Yeah. But people don't understand that because it's, it's they be like, oh, it's my time. And then also when it's people that's not serious about what they're doing, they not gonna give a fuck. Sure. They just like, okay, it's like whatever. It's an interview. It's no big deal. Like, but sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going up though, man. Yeah. I like what Houston going. Shout out to everybody creating content. For real. Shout out to all the content creators, man. They ain't never no hate. But I ain't gonna lie. For context sake, we gotta critique each other. Like, hey, you know, you somebody else might say something that you might not agree with, mm -hmm. and then hey, you got you get you some content off of that. Well, man, what your college just said this and this and that. Hey, I don't really like that. Let me talk about that. Right, and it ain't personal. You right. know what I'm saying? But it's you all gotta business. Do, you it's know all what business. You got to do that. So we all love, man. If you and Ace Time tap in with me, tap in with them most definitely because okay. they run it up. They got a spot you can pull up to. Bro, you got to promote yourself, man. You yeah, got to yeah. get your face seen, man. You don't know who watching. Exactly. Bro, all the, everybody went through that shit when nobody was fucking with them. Like I said, yeah. bro, everybody went through that phase where, where they started. Unless you was already a lit nigga in the streets or something or you right. was lit before. Uh -huh. Where, hey, man, the hoes ain't fucking with you like that. They not. They don't think you attractive. They they turning you down. They like this or that. And, and then, nigga, once your shit pop, Poppin'. them same hoes, they don't right give a fuck back, about your hair being nappy I'm no more, right nigga. Back. They don't give a fuck about your teeth being fucked up no uh, more, nigga. Man. They nigga, we finna eat that dick up tonight, nigga. That's what they <laughs> own, nigga. That's how they coming, Fucking bro. Facts. I done seen this shit happen to so many niggas, bro. I seen Riff Raff be in Greens Point Mall every day trying to pump his CD. Nobody fucking with him. That nigga made it to G's and Gents. Now this nigga coming down, touching, putting his hands on badass exotics and Badass, hey, even some IG models that got millions of followers, nigga, when he wasn't even known yet because he did that G's and G's. They was Riff Raff that got some of them bitches y'all yeah. in love with, nigga. Not to put them out like that, but you know what I'm yeah, talking it about. It don't take much. It that's what I'm saying, much. bro. All you got to do is think about that, bro. Think about what that's going to do for your confidence. You got to stick with your shit. Yep. Nobody's shit cool until it's cool. Once you get your bag and your... And your and your respect behind it, everybody gonna come to you like, hey, you did that, my nigga, you yeah. did that. That's why you gotta stay punching, man. Yup. They got, cause after, they gotta respect you because, yeah. like, again, most people can't do it for that long or wanna do it that long. Sure. So, they gotta I'm inspired. I'm out, bro. I already told myself, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm already in the game, bro. I, I just wanted one nigga. I was just like, bro, when I start, I want one nigga to just fuck with me in the game, just chop it up with me, whatever. And that'll show me that that's the way. And I got that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted one nigga to fuck with me in the game and just chop it up with me on, on whatever. Then I said, man, if I get one bad bitch 
to motherfucking acknowledge that she see the grind and she see my vision. Mm -hmm. And then my tea lady supported me. My tea lady said, I, 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 she don't even know exactly what I do, yeah. but she know I'm doing something <laughs> yeah. and she supportive of it. That's so love. with that going on, I got that. I had yeah. a bad bitch, a very exclusive bad bitch, reach out to me, man, I like what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I fuck with that. So I, that's, that's lit. Then nigga Money Man tapped in with me on some G shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, Follow my other blog page when it ain't had but a hundred followers on that bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did that. Wallow, Wallow267 tapped in with me. I tapped in with Mozzie. He gave me a drop. You know what that's I'm saying? Right. So different niggas in the game is they 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 tapping they in a little attention. bit. But and that's another thing. If people that's like that in the industry, yeah. if they can see it. That means that's you got something there. You got something. Yeah, they see that they they gotta take you serious when yeah. you are sticking with it, man. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I feel like my it's getting there. I gotta earn out some kinks and things. I gotta do better too. Yeah, it's always it's, you can always improve. I gotta make some improvements, but it, it's yeah. it's like bro, it's possible now. I yeah. passed that step. Now I'm like, hey, this it for me, nigga. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. Right. Like I'm doing this regardless. Nigga, whatever happened to me, if I fought, whatever happened, I'm bouncing back, still coming with urban politicians, exactly. still going to be in the streets doing interviews. I'd have been in every side of Ace Time. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> every every section of Ace, I'd have been in East, North, South, West. I ain't been in every single hood in Ace Time, but I'd have been on North Side, South Side, East Side, West Side. I'm talking about the trenches, whatever. I go get the content, man. That's me. That's for sure. Nah, for sure. So, uh, I want to ask you, who's your... Uh What's your favorite interview that you've done, and who's your favorite interviewer? The favorite interview, uh, my favorite interview I've done, uh, man, I got I got a couple. I got to just say, I got, I no, go ahead, go ahead. My nigga Pee Wee, my nigga South Park Sims Bio, nigga, you know it's I love, dog. My nigga Pee Wee for sure. Uh, Pee Wee, that's the nigga. If y'all know, he got booed at the stage at PV. You know, Pee Wee got some, uh, PV got some ruthless uh, students. You know what I'm saying? You know, they just did the shit with K-Camp. Uh -huh. They did that to a nigga from South Park that I know named Pee Wee. They booed him, and uh, <laughs> that nigga lost his mind. He got on video. And, Man, I'll shoot one of y'all bitch-ass niggas. <laughs> nigga, don't you ever boo no buy you sims, buy your shit, nigga. Rest in peace, little rest in peace, Drake, nigga. Da -da -da. I'll smoke one of you bitch-ass niggas. Don't ever fuck with me, nigga. Then they, they was still booing him. And that nigga pulled his dick out on the bitches. Yeah. <laughs> he lost some dick. He go back to his hood. And he did a freestyle about it. The PV freestyle. <laughs> That's what I'm going to show y'all that shit when we done. And he did a whole response video That's and everything. Funny. What the fuck? Yeah, nigga. <laughs> so he did what K Cap did before K Cap. But yeah. everybody don't know. Shout out to my nigga Pee Wee. Pee Wee, I hit him right out the gate when niggas wasn't in my neighborhood wasn't even fucking with me on this shit. When I try to ask him to do an interview, mm -hmm. they see me go out there and do that interview in way in South Park. For the people that don't know, Greens Point. To motherfucking South Park is like 45 minutes with traffic. You know what I'm saying? Way on the other side of town. I went way out there and did that interview. So niggas from my hood like, damn. I already seen he be doing interviewing little niggas around here. Right. And that nigga went way to South Park in the trench and did that shit in their hood. Exactly. Niggas from Greens Point don't even be over there like that unless they got a, a relationship or got some money they getting out there or right. something. So I went out there and did that shit. Niggas start, hey man, what's up, boy? What you got up? Like, duh, yeah, you know? Yeah, so that was one. Now. Then my nigga uh, Blue from Detroit, man, my nigga Roly Gang Blue. In the beginning, when I was kind of first, and this was still on the podcast phase, when I was like, man, is this shit gonna do anything? I was having people call in to the uh -huh. podcast, and I have them call in, and I put the phone. I don't, I don't know how to do this shit, so I right. just put the phone on the extra <laughs> mic. That shit worked too. And, yeah, and, and just ask them the questions, and they'll answer. So I hit Blue. He way in Detroit, man. I follow that Detroit rap scene super heavy. I'm a big fan. I love the Detroit rap scene. So my nigga Blue, I hit that nigga right out the gate. Like, man, bro, I want you to call into this podcast. I had just started following the nigga. Right. He had just started really rapping. Uh -huh. And shit, that nigga hit me right back. We can do that. Yeah. Called me, and the energy was like A1 from there. Right. And then yeah. now we used to be rocking damn near. You know, he every time he come, he, he promote his music real heavy. He right. go record in different cities because he really want to get in the game. So mm -hmm. he record in different cities, everything. And he stay tapped in with me. I stay tapped in with him. That's so that's cool. another way it was just real genuine. Yeah, that's and always that, a good feeling when you try yeah. to we get to interview somebody and they just like yeah. they instantaneous with that, that instant shit. shit. Yeah, yeah like, just, they ready to work. That's like you you know somebody really trying to do this shit. Which yeah, my bad. Sure. Go ahead. So, so so that was that that was like another one of my top interviews. And then my dude Trap Genius, and it's more than just these. I fuck Trap. with all of them, but these are the ones just off the top. Mm -hmm. My dog Trap Genius TG. 
Hey man, LA, Crenshaw, you know what I'm saying? Neighborhood, hey, I fuck with y'all, it's all love, dog, because I met him in prison. Word. He was in prison, I'm free. Just on Instagram, fucking around, I come across his page, I send him a request, because he was in somebody comments or something. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this nigga talking that rap shit. Like, let me see what he on. So I sent him a request. Mm -hmm. He in prison on his cell phone rapping <laughs> every day. Damn. I'm talking about hey, that's freestyle. Well, every day he can get to the phone, he yeah. doing freestyles. He got instrumentals playing, freestyling on the instrumentals. Yeah. He uh shoot music videos in there where they doing push ups and uh yeah, you know and, and he got them like the niggas doing what they do in prison yeah. in the background yeah. and the and sell. End up releasing a whole mixtape in prison. That's wild. And it's on Apple Music right now. Risk takers. <laughs> it's on there. Go get that. That's just you can't deny that. So That's fucking grinding. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking dog, the way he rapping, the way he up to he following all the current rappers. I'm like, man, he must have been only been in here a couple years. He was rapping before he went in. Man, that nigga was in there eight years. Nigga, what? That's like growing up in prison. Yeah. He was in that bitch That's eight. A long ass time. He was in that bitch eight years, dog. Shit. He had came across a phone in there and he just learned all this shit in prison. I was like, damn. It's like, yeah, man, he had to separate himself from the other niggas who do music, like niggas putting out singles. He's like, That's basically like the weed, man. You calling your he said, nigga, you selling dime sacks. He said, if you put out a whole project, nigga, you a pound, nigga. They got to respect you. You yeah. a nigga moving pounds. So that's why he took that risk. Like, yeah. fuck it, nigga. You get caught with the phone. They throwing more time on. Yeah, so, so you he, might as well put that work in. Cause he took a so he like, fuck it, nigga. I'm, I'm about to take the risk and go forward. Yeah. So, man, he got out in January. Came home instantly. Got to it. Stayed down. Been working. I wish I could do more. Could have done more for him. Uh -huh. Like, if I would have been in the game, he would have been the nigga. Hey, nigga, I'm stamping you. I'm going to have you around me how no jump will be with, uh, what's the little uh, white boy name? Uh, oh, uh, Lil Zane. Yeah, he Lil won't Zane. let Lil Zane career Bro, die. Not he at will all. not. Shout out to no jump. I fuck with y'all, but you know you don't want to let Lil Zane career Bro. die. He'll be with me how that nigga with Lil Zane. This, no, this ain't even a comparable nigga to Lil Zane, but yeah, I'm nah, just saying. Lil don't you just say how he, he got a voice. No jumper got a voice, uh -huh. so he keep Lil Zane around because that's his dog. Right. I would have him. If I had that type of voice, he would be with me like that. But, I feel it. So he came out rapping, da da da. Man, he didn't put out videos. He didn't put out tr singles, tracks, all that. Y'all follow him, man. Uh, Trap Genius, this shit serious on Instagram. He, and, and he actually then linked up with Maxo Cream. Where? Just came home in January. Got got a couple tracks with Maxo Cream. They linked in the studio out in LA. They doing their thing. He came out here last Friday. He on tour with Maxo Cream right now. And that's love. He was he, just yeah, he was just here. He was just here yeah. at the Maxo Cream. Brought me backstage, dog. That's love. Bro, I love. interviewed him. We did the interview. Uh -huh. Uh we did it at the hotel first. Ended up having to scrap that because the waterfall was coming down. So yeah. I was like, it's going the audio might make people click off of it and yeah. won't do what it do. Yeah. So I uh we ended up redoing it. They came, he came by the crib mm -hmm. and, and we did it at, at my crib. You know what I'm saying? And it's all love with them. We went to the show that night. Um Motherfucker had me backstage, tapped in. I've been to over 50 concerts, I know. I ain't <laughs> never been backstage. For real? At no concert. Never. Never been backstage. He took me backstage to my first concert. That's a lie. And, and, and I can't... He doing, doing, showing me love because he just like, man, you was fucking with me, but it's crazy. He don't even know. He locked up doing time. He hit me on a regular afternoon. What's up, bro? How you doing today, man? What you did today? Right. He in prison. I'm like, damn, why this nigga checking up on yeah. me? He in the pen. <laughs> I'm like, this shit crazy. Yeah, but that's love, though. That's love. love. So, yeah. bro, we locked in forever, dog. That's tight. That's tight as fuck. Yeah, shout out to my boy K Stu, too. That's his engineer. Shout out to that whole Risk Takers team, man. That's 1,000. That's what's up. I'm definitely going to check him out. For sure, man. That's love. Yeah. Um, Who's your favorite interviewer? My favorite interviewer? Uh, I got to go with... Uh, Charlemagne the God, probably a little bit of Charlemagne. I I gotta give some man. It's multiple ones. Yeah, I can't just say one. Charlemagne was is one. I gotta give it to Vlad a little bit, even though Vlad do a lot of shit I don't like. Yeah. But that I gotta say he get he get good questions. He get he get he get the the suspense. Like is yeah. this nigga gonna answer this dumb ass shit? Yeah. It's like you gotta watch it. Like you have to yeah. watch it. I yeah. don't agree with it because he be he be saying he says shit. He be uninformed on and asking shit. That you can't, that you shouldn't probably ask, but it's like, hey, you gotta watch the shit. So I gotta give him yeah. his credit in it, and then uh, I gotta give credit to say cheese being so raw. Uh, who else? You know, I gotta give credit to Gutter TV. 
uh, like I said, Alex and Lund. Made so many, I don't want to leave nobody out, but <laughs> no jump with all of them. I fuck yeah. with everybody. I fuck with Sway Energy. But if I just got to watch one person just sit back and watch them do their interviews, dog. Oh, man, because I like the raw shit, too. It's hard to say Charlemagne because Charlemagne is a grown a grown man interviewer. Yeah. Yeah. But I be wanting to hear the young the young nigga, <laughs> niggas who know the young niggas, too, who do interviews. Right. So that's the thing that makes me kind of go with no jumper a little bit. Yeah. You know, because he interviewed the young niggas. I fuck with the young niggas, too. Yeah, he and, just started getting into, like, the more the older head. And he can, inter- see, he can do both, and he yeah. going to know the content of both. Right. As opposed to Charlemagne might do a... a, a a young nigga interview and never heard a song. The interview gonna yeah. still be great. Right, yeah. He, cause you know what they, I'm saying? The same thing with um with Joe Budden because he'll ask good questions and everything. Yeah. But they they still gonna have their bias about the younger yeah, artist. Exactly. So it's just exactly. like I, that's that's the one thing I like. I ain't gonna lie, bro. What's up? And Joe Budden, I fuck with you, dog. Fuck with your podcast. You got the number one podcast after mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Facts. I fuck with him. So I, I fuck with Rory. I fuck with Ma. Yeah, they going in. I fuck with the niggas. I don't even know what they look like. Save us. Yeah, Erickson. <laughs> Erickson. Yeah, all yeah, these niggas, man. The it's manager. Crazy. What's the manager name? Uh, Fuck, I forgot his e- name. E, 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 yeah, man. All them up. I fuck with yeah. the whole concept because all that, that show wouldn't be where it is without all of them. Yeah. They Ma, make the, show. the whole team, Rory, yeah. every time they have a guest, I fuck with everybody, but I ain't going to lie, bro. I do not like Joe Budden interviews. No, his pull-ups is like... Bro, them hoes, it's not good to me, bro. He, he be asking, like, good questions, but he still has a lot of his own personal bias is a part of him and it's like you Man. can't get a good interview and out get a good interview out if you're taking your own personal opinions and adding them to the to the questions and yeah. to the artist himself like he, yeah. he interviewed YB and Corday uh, <laughs> and you know he like he's 20 years old like, like barely turned 21 yeah and what he dropped that album and that was probably like one of the, like the better albums of the year and he was just you know it's still like all right, he's asking the questions like, yeah. oh, okay, like how what makes you, you know, what, who did you listen to, all this, that, and the other, but he's still like, so like, how are you even rapping like that? Like, yeah. you're, you're only 20, like, what do you know? It's yeah. like, what, what that nigga gotta know? He made good music, that's all that matter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he ain't rapping on no shit he don't know about, he ain't yeah. talking about no trapping shit. He's saying, like, y'all was broke as fuck when See, I was a kid. It, it's you know? the way he questioned it, it, cause I know what he's trying to say, trying yeah. to say, what, man. How are you this good at this age? That's it's what like, he want to say, but it's the way he worded yeah. his questions. When he talked to people, I'd be like, damn, bro, you sound like a fucking therapist, bro. Yeah, I'd be like, that's I what fu- he do. He, he sound like a I'm like, damn, you sound like a fucking therapist, yeah. Joe. Because I, I, I know he had like, like mental health problems yeah, and shit yeah, yeah. and drug issues, so he, he got that concept of talking like that. Yeah. But I don't like that. It's like, bro, I love this nigga podcast to death, bro. Yeah. Like, I listen to it as much as I can. But yeah. when he do these pull ups, I'd be like, man, fuck that pull up yeah, shit, the bro. Pull ups, it's, it's kind of trash. I want to see Wayno get in the interviews, too. Who? Wayno. I oh. want to see Wayno. Okay. Off of Everyday Struggle. Yeah. Even that nigga Academics do good interviews. I ain't gonna lie. Academics. I checked out, isn't he? He don't do a lot. He don't really do a lot of them. Like when he interviewed 21, he interviewed uh, Lil Reese uh, from Chicago. Reese. Uh, Reese. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if y'all know Reese 300. Uh, the, he interviewed yeah, Reese. Uh, he did the Takashi 69 first interview. Before Takashi took off, they he interviewed him inside that's of a wild. restaurant. That's what he interviewed him because of all the pedophile shit, and that's uh, when and that's yeah, when I knew yeah, and, I, and that's yeah. when I first knew that Takashi was iffy. He sounded like he wanted to cry on that fucking interview. Damn, for real. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this nigga's iffy. He's <laughs> iffy. I knew it then when DJ Academics first interviewed him because uh-huh. he just basically like was interviewing him and you could just tell the dude was super nervous but he was already repping the bloods and all yeah. that other shit at the time but this was before it just all the way took yeah. off the hit had came already but he wasn't taking off and he still was having to answer to the sexual the sexual yeah. pedophile shit so when he when he was answering the question I'm like man this nigga iffy dog yeah. and then I knew that's why I knew I'm like yeah. but academics can sit down and actually do interviews, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. he really interview NBA young boy. He'll interview artists when he he'll click him in on this little chat thing. Yeah, and or like when he, like when he been in um in his house and be like on the chair. Or yeah, yeah, in the yeah. chair in the little room. He'll click artists in and he do good. He do he create good content interviews too. So shout out academics. Check out some I don't shit. agree with everything academics do at times. Uh, he, he be on some bitch shit. He be uh, on some shit yeah. I don't agree with. <laughs> but at the same, I gotta respect all these niggas I be naming. I know how hard it is to do yeah. what y'all do. 
I would never try to say y'all don't. Respect the business aspect of it. Yeah, like, I, the content I, I, you create, but. Bro, I can't yeah. say these niggas don't deserve a spot because I know what it take to do this shit, bro. I know how hard. Smart, smart. You, the content that you watching, that's the easy part. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest part you of this shit. You see all the shit that went behind. Behind that, that yeah, shit. The that's ten, a lot. <laughs> and them niggas been doing this shit 10 years, 7 years, 8 years, 4 years, 5 years. Six years, so I got to respect all them niggas, hard. bro. On that level, I might not like everything you do, but I don't have no personal core with them niggas. Right. But I am gonna go at y'all shit for the content. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> for sure. With that. For sure. Um. So with uh the way that like I guess social media has become like this, man, I don't even know. Like it's 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 exceeded like all our expectations basically because. Sure. When we was growing up, when it first came out, like we before when we was growing up, you can't even be on a computer and talk on the phone at the same time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Nah. Like now it's nah, like okay, <laughs> right? You can be on the phone, on the internet, and then recording a video at the same damn time type shit. That's but right. like, and also just the way the internet is being used, it's using been used to create all these platforms and everything. Do you think that that uh? Because I remember what I believe it was like last year. They was having the talks about uh, regulating the internet. Do you so, think um, the internet needs regulation? Fuck no. No? It's Freedom of speech. Okay. Freedom of speech. If you ain't caught, and then it's that fine line I know of what is and isn't calm, causing harm or this or that. Mm. Bro, we got to be strict on it, man. If you, if you are promoting, and people can say, well, that's promoting violence. That's promoting violence. Man, I just feel like we got to just deal with it how we deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You can't really create regulation on it because it's freedom of speech. You know right. what I'm saying? The internet is the most powerful tool of the world today because we're in the age of information. Definitely. If you ain't in the internet, you lost in the sauce. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You slacking in your macking. You got to get your shit together if you ain't part of this internet way, bro. The internet got me talking to niggas way overseas, man. Right. Niggas from Belgium, they hit me up. You feel me? Right. I'm talking to niggas in different cities and networking. Like I said, I done made money off the internet. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't directly through the internet. Well, YouTube done cut me a couple checks. I am monetized, but I'm just saying everything digital now. You right. know what I'm saying? Without right. the internet, I would have never been able to be heard. My voice don't get heard. I never right. would have got to talk to this artist or that artist or, or this or that. You know what I'm saying? Everything that went to the website. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is getting their bitches off the internet now. Niggas is <laughs> selling their clothes off the internet now. Niggas is trapping on the internet now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not a good idea to do it. All but right. you got niggas running. <laughs> you got niggas running up racks and racks through the motherfucking internet. Niggas right. is meeting plugs, nigga, yeah. off the internet. That's just what it is. Niggas getting their shoes, their clothes, everything. Everything. Niggas is online shopping for groceries now, man. Yeah. Which hey, it's like goddamn, it's fucking making us lazy as shit in the world today. But hey. The internet is the way, bro. You got to get with the times or you're going to be left behind. Yeah. So I'm not with that brick of, you know, do what we got to do on this motherfucker. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm with the freedom of speech, yeah. but the way I look at it is more of like the the toxic side of the internet. Because yeah. most people, like, like not everybody is going to be like us, like yeah, using it to like sure. promote their business and everything like that. Yeah. Some people are going there and literally just start some bullshit. For like, sure. Start some drama, get some bullshit, say some rumors about some shit, get somebody yeah. going, talking over here, this, that, and the other. Racism, or, yeah, hate groups, you know, uh, the people that, like, the, the homophobic people that yeah, don't like gay people, all that little all disrespectful that. shit, yeah. And then people do like the whole, uh, like people use like Facebook Live and like they'll do some wild ass shit, like, um, like the Facebook Live killer. Like he went yeah. around just killing people, just yeah. recording that shit. Dumb like, shit. That's like, I'm, I see it more for like regulating. That shit. Yeah. I guess uh, just because uh, if you're using it for, I guess, more positive, like, outlook kind of thing, it's cool. But, like, if you're doing it for, like, that bullshit, then I feel like either they need to regulate them. It might just be more of a person by person basis, honestly. That might be. But then you got those people who going to say, well, like, that's why I, I always kind of, like, don't get into that because, okay, you might hear somebody on here calling. Uh, you might hear a white person over here. Oh, fuck these niggas. These niggas. These these niggas. That. <laughs> oh, you can't say that. You doing racism. But at the same time, that white person can come. And I don't agree with it. Uh-huh. But I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right. Oh, well, y'all saying bitches and hoes and niggas and y'all shit too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a fine it's fucking line, everybody. and I hate that it's yeah. there. I wish everybody could just be healthy with their shit. But yeah, I know that's not, not the, the world case. we live in today. Some people just. People ain't yeah. healthy by themselves. They ain't gonna be healthy with a phone and all this social media. And stuff. Yeah, fuck so, no, man. Yeah. Social media is crazy, bro. We basic. 
you know, it's the it's a gift and a curse, bro. Yeah, most it's definitely. Because you got so many people, they, bro, it's niggas on the internet right now that's fucked up, ain't got no money, ain't got shit. But they up on but that they on they, they on that IG nah, and they looking it's like it's they something. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with the females. You glorifying this bitch. You think this bitch everything, nigga. You like, damn, I want to, I kiss that bad bitch right in her mouth right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> People hey, like, I drink your bath I'm going like, raw. If they hoe let me fuck, I'm going to go raw. You just don't even know. She's sleeping on a homegirl couch and she just ate ramen noodles like you, my nigga. Right. Like, yeah. she yeah. ain't on shit. You, you know got on this saying? pedestal and she, she, she yeah. right next to you. And she cool. fucked all the way up. I don't know where her next dollar coming from. So I say that shit to say, man, you never know with social media, bro. Yeah. That's why I try my best not to shit on nobody who working. Because, and that's why I came with y'all too. Because I'm like, hey, y'all getting started up. But at the same time, I don't give a fuck how many views or followers y'all got because, nigga, this is an opportunity. I don't know what God got planned for y'all tomorrow, nigga. Right. God might be like, man, uh, y'all might just run into a nigga at the corner store and tell him what y'all got going. He might say, nigga, I'm going to take you on the road with me, nigga, because you serious. Right. And then y'all lit. And then I shitted on y'all the day before. Yeah. When y'all was when y'all was trying to do good business. Yep. You can't fuck with everybody. Just don't shit on people. You nah, feel yeah, me? it's definitely a difference. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because, yeah, you know, if somebody do bad business, it's like, okay, it's like, you learn from it, but it's like, okay, yeah. I, you still got, again, respect to what they doing because yeah. they don't have to be doing that shit. They could For be sure. just doing some other bullshit. For sure. But yeah, nah. Because uh, uh, I was thinking about that shit because I was having a conversation with that shit uh, about the internet with my homies yesterday because yeah. um, we was talking about, uh, you know, Kanye dropped Jesus is King yeah. and um, he did the interview with Big Boy and he was talking a little bit about, uh, I just saw like the little snippet of the clip and he was just saying like how, uh, social media like is like ruining people's lives and everything how like you know on IG like say you yo, you got a girl and everything you, you and your girl post a pic I got a pic or whatever IG gonna get the pic before you see that shit you know what yeah. I'm saying it's yeah. like it's got people on lock kind of thing like peel it but the thing they, is uh, I, I see what he's saying but the thing is bro this is your whole fucking existence yeah so it's like what are you really telling me bro cause at the end of the day, if you if you feel that way about it, then get the fuck off of social shit. media. Exactly. Don't put your music out, nigga. Like, yeah. and you're not forced to be there, nigga. Right. But your whole your gal social media is the reason That's she's a fucking bitch. She she you know, Kylie the whole the, the whole without goddamn family shit, be without the internet they nobodies, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That show would not. They of course they had keeping up with the Kardashians, but they would not be on the level they on without the internet, yeah. y'all. Because literally, shit without the internet. Kim Kardashian, we exactly. would have seen the fucking tape. Exactly, yeah. that's what got them popping. That's what I'm saying. Like, so we we would have we would have seen Kanye without the internet because you was yeah. on TV, nigga. You was popping. You was doing music and right, concert. Right. But a lot of people we don't see them without the internet, my nigga. Yeah. So it's a gift and a curse. Just leave it at that. Don't try to because you make it. It don't sound good, bro, when you, the nigga making millions off exactly what you're talking about, nigga. Your fucking Yeezys get sold on the Instagram, nigga. Yeah. Click the link in the bio. Adidas got the website. Putting your goddamn shoes and your Everywhere. clothes and your merch. So when he say that shit, anything Kanye say to me, I take it with a grain of salt. You got to. <laughs> or to the people and go one ear and out the other, yeah. nigga. Because you're you're basically living in your own things you were shitting on, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you doing it for the gram. You doing it, nigga. Yo, gal doing That's for the gram, good. nigga. Yo, wifey. No disrespect to her. That's a man white, but yeah. she do everything for the gram. But also, it's another thing for him because it's probably like a thing like he don't even have to be on this shit. He probably has some. He got somebody you pay somebody yeah. to do that shit for him. Yeah. So he's like, I don't. I'm personally may not be on Instagram or on Twitter. Well, he's not Twitter. on Instagram. We know he's on Twitter. Yeah. Kanye, the type of nigga, he's not gonna let another nigga tweet his thoughts for him. Yeah. We know <laughs> yeah. that he gonna be yeah, like, oh, I feel this way. Yeah. Nah, nah, fuck that. Nigga. Nah, I, I used to live for them nigga rants. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, no, they entertaining. Yeah. They be, some of them be super disrespectful, <laughs> yeah. but they are entertaining. But, nah, bro, Kanye is a fucking genius. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. This is why he does that, so we can do exactly what we're doing Talk right now. Talk about it. Talk about Get it and stream the album, man. bro. Yep. He going out here bringing up the, the politics that he has. Bro, politics are facts. You see what I'm saying? Are mm -hmm. facts put together when yeah. it comes to government politics. The facts get put together. Right. You make your opinions based on the facts. Kanye don't even got all the facts together. Nah. You talking about when the free, who freed the slaves and you know if they throw a net, let's not stand in the same place. My nigga, the the slaves wasn't just th caught under nets. Some of them were tricked into slavery, yeah. bro. They was thinking they going to do business. Where, yeah, do like some of them were just blatantly kidnapped. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Some of them thinking they going to work and get a job, then they get somewhere, they get knocked out and they thrown on a boat. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Boat, man, that's crazy. It, it, everybody wasn't took into slavery like that, bro. Some of them was kidnapped and they waking up in a house full of slaves now. Yeah. And they don't know where they at. They don't know where to go. Ain't wasn't no cell phones, bro. I just feel like you got to be sensitive how you talk about that time, bro. Yeah. Don't bring that time up and speak on, uh, oh, they had a choice. That shit was a choice. How, my nigga? How, nigga? You trying to survive. You don't know where you at. Yeah. See, it's easy to say that because we know what we would have done now, but they didn't have the information that we have right, now. Then. Nigga, you don't know what the fuck you would have did. Because I, I got what you're saying when you're saying it's like it was a choice thing. Yeah. But I, it's, it was definitely the way he phrased it. It's yeah. like he can't see... You can say that if you yeah. okay. You chilling with the homies, having an open conversation. You yeah. can say some shit like that. Yeah. You can't go on like public television, yeah. say that shit, and expect everybody to take that shit. But calmly. I feel like we don't reserve the right to comment on that because we don't deal with that. Like okay, say if somebody shoot a nigga over something, right? Mm -hmm. And you went through that same thing, and you chose not to shoot a nigga over, or fight a nigga over, or get into an altercation over it. Right. You can say, hey, he shouldn't have did that because you was around that. Right. But nigga, we was we never, never around slavery, slavery so we to be making what we should. Well, oh, we should have did this. No, we could have done that because of what we know now. But and they yeah, understand, yeah. bro. They making this shit look good on these fucking movies. That shit was uh, a million times worse, worse in person, yeah. bro. They okay. raping motherfuckers. They making dudes rape their daughters in front of them and sleep with their own daughters. Yeah. They making men watch as they sleep with their women, bro. Yeah. Don't speak on that shit because you wasn't there, yeah. dog. It was, it was a lot of... They making it look good in movies. They got production and million dollars and votes invested in putting it on the screen for our entertainment. Right. It's not to make us realize how bad the shit really was. And they be trying to like... Even doing that shit, they try to kind of like, all right, yeah, we got this black hero doing this thing. But even still with the black hero, it's always that that white, you know, man that was like, okay, yeah, yeah I helped you out. I did you. It's like, it's still, yeah. it's still catered for it to make them look good exactly. at the same time. Exactly. Um, it's, yeah. It, yeah, nah, because yeah. it, it, was, it was definitely some fucked up shit. But, sure. yeah. Sure. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, fucking man. Life, but fucking... Yeah, I don't even know. I don't yeah. even know what they say no more. But. Yeah, the game changing, bro. Yeah, the game it's definitely is just, changing. The game is just going to another level, bro. It's 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 like you gotta you gotta know how to include yourself and mm -hmm. exclude yourself. Get yeah. in and get out. You gotta know when it's your time to talk. And when it's your time to be quiet. Exactly. You gotta know when it's your People opinion. Have a hard time doing you that. gotta know when your <laughs> opinion is need to be heard. And it's crazy you say that because that's the biggest thing with content creators today and people in the comments. Mm -hmm. People listen and in the world in general conversation, people listen and read to respond and not to understand. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Nobody listening to break down and use their context clues. And sit and to understand what you what point you're trying to make. Right. Niggas is just already thinking they, oh, I'm coming with this response. Yeah, they got their rebuttal already. They ready. already got their comeback. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So people gotta really understand that shit, bro. Cause the the, the world just fucked up, bro. We yeah. live in a world where a nigga who ain't got a car, a nigga who ain't got this or got that or ain't got a house, they ain't got a car, a house, or a place to stay. They'll tell a nigga who got a hoop ride, hey man, that's a bullshit ass car, nigga. <laughs> or nigga, Where your you? highs broke, man. Then you stay in the hood. Where your shit at? Well, but you <laughs> ain't got no. But niggas is really comfortable saying that shit to people man. nowadays, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hey, nigga, you ain't this and you ain't that. You know what I'm saying? Or hey, hey, I got a hundred thousand on me, nigga. I'm richer than y'all niggas. Then y'all niggas broke. You know what I'm saying? I'm a hundred thousand up. Y'all niggas over here, all broke niggas, man. Y'all weak. Okay, nigga. What do you do when you go around that nigga who got ten million? Exactly. Do, do, are you beneath him? Are you beneath that nigga because he got ten million? Do you they feel don't like that conversation? They you don't want that nigga. Don't want to have that conversation, yeah, bro. Man. You don't want to have that conversation. But I, that's why some niggas they get on the ground. They they shining in the midst of their peers, bro. Yep. And some niggas do it. It's just entertainment when they doing it. Yeah. I understand that's a part that's, of the rap some game. Some people, that's, the, that's, that's, like that's a, their mindset. Yeah, it's they an fucking, ego thing. They ego like, nigga, I'm better than all y'all niggas. Yeah. But, bro, you talking about your peers. You got more money than the niggas you be around every day. Right. But what about this group of niggas over here who got more shit than you? Right. Got a better car than you. Da -da -da. What do you do when you get around them? You put your hands in your pockets and be quiet? Right, exactly. You don't want to have that conversation, yeah, They ain't trying to have exactly. it, man. They, they don't want to so, talk about it. And then it's also the thing, shit, you got that 100000 what you doing with that shit? Yeah. If you just got that shit. You oh, 100 mi of whatever, goes, it's yeah. levels. It's just yeah, levels. whatever it is, shit. What yeah. you doing with your shit, that's yeah. going to make the fucking difference. Supposed to be living your life, bro. So I yeah. say, nigga, no matter how much money you make, bro, 
If you happy, you take care of your responsibilities. You living your life, nigga. You winning. You good. I don't give a fuck what nobody talk about, nigga. Niggas I take that money just to flex on the ground. Man, I'm going to tell you like this, <laughs> nigga. Ain't no nigga when I walk in the room better than me. I don't give a fuck what Shit. they got, nigga. Nigga, I don't give a fuck what kind of car you driving. I don't care how much. Bad equals. Nigga, yeah, nigga, I don't give a equals. fuck. Hey, you, I respect your, your star status. I respect what you had in the game, what you created and the level you got to. Mm-hmm. So we going to do, you know, when it comes to this business side of shit, we got to do it accordingly. Right. You know what I'm saying? But right. when it comes to me as a man, nah, my nigga ain't no nigga better than me. Nah, I don't let niggas talk to me crazy, bro. I don't nah. let no nigga treat me like they beneath me, dog. Nah, nah. Like I'm beneath them. Hell nah, nigga. That's or no bitch. That's like, hella disrespectful. Hell nah, I don't let females do this. Some nigga let nah. females, bitch, you up. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to fuck with me. <laughs> like, hey, I shoot my shot at you as a female. Right. You might not be feeling me. You might not say, okay, he ain't this, he ain't that. I'm not feeling him. Right. You got a right to reject me. Right. But don't try to treat a nigga like I'm beneath you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you just ain't my type, nigga. Yeah, I'm not yeah, fucking yeah, with yeah. you. You ain't got enough paper. Or you ain't got enough name. It's you not right. I have no personal preference, but don't don't yeah. don't talk down. Nah, you not gonna talk down a big yeah. end. We don't, we ain't doing that. Because that's, that's what I hate. Like how people do. Like I understand like celebrities. People like just like wow. Like yeah. they're like Beyonce or Jay Z or something like that. Wow, yeah. I can't believe I like I met them or something like that or whatever. Yeah. Or some crazy. But like at the end of the day, it's a person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I would probably, love to meet him too. Though. I love to meet him too. Don't get me wrong. But you know what it's, saying? More like, like, yeah. it's more like I want to have like I'm more like I I'd be more kind of starstruck not because they're them. Yeah. It's the knowledge they have because exactly. how much stuff like information they have about the game and because they they done this shit. They they can honestly they can retire right fucking now and know how to work sure. another day in their life. But sure, sure. they you know they still they still working. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I. I'm starstruck about the knowledge you have and the game I can, I'm about to receive from you because I got to even get in this position to even talk to you. But I'm not starstruck about you, your your celebrity. I'm not, I'm not doing anything like, oh, I want an autograph. No, I want to have a conversation with you. I'm trying to talk sure. to you, like see what sure. you want. Like what do what did what are you doing differently than I'm doing to get you in this position? Because I'm trying to get where you at. Like sure. so that it's yeah, it's people with celebrities. They kind of um they let that shit get to their head and sure. it's just. It's all good though, yeah. man. It's going up, bro. I want to yeah. tell y'all though, keep pushing y'all oh, shit. Man, appreciate man. it. Appreciate sure, it. Dog. Shout out to everybody doing their thing at Ace Time. I want to shout out all the up and coming rappers out here, man. Shout out to. I just dropped two interviews today, matter of fact. I just dropped two new yeah, interviews. Yeah, yeah. I dropped one with uh, Boo Poppy, and I dropped one yesterday with AZ. They from South Park, so y'all go run them up. Shout out to Old South Park, whole MLK, everything over that way, Southeast. You know what I'm saying? So. Everybody who fucking with me, man, I appreciate all the support. Everybody who didn't subscribe to the channel, man. Everybody who be showing love and watching, tapping in. I can't thank y'all enough. I just hit 11k subscribers on yeah, YouTube. That's what's up. Congratulations! And I, and I appreciate that a lot. I made like 1.56 million, 1.6 million total views on the channel. And I know like it's certain niggas that get a million views or video or whatever, but hey, nigga, I'm proud of the level I'm on. You know what I'm saying? Because I do everything myself. Yeah. I do my own. I set up the own interview myself. I, I I pull up by myself. I'm my own transportation. I'm my own driver. <laughs> I'm my own cameraman. Right. I'm my own editor. I'm my own uploader. Uh, I'm my own security. I'm my <laughs> own promoter. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm my own publicist. Yeah. I do my own speaking. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of work. I do everything <laughs> on my own. Yeah. So I be like, you know. I appreciate everybody that fuck with me and take me serious on this shit. Just like y'all did today, man. It's 1,000 for sure. For sure. Y'all subscribe to Urban Politicians TV. Subscribe to them. Y'all see the name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, check it out. Um, Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. Yeah. All that. Um, Say the same for us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment um, for feedback. Uh, We set up a GoFundMe. Um... Donate to the GoFundMe. For sure. Um, we'll take a penny. We'll take a dollar. It don't even matter. Whatever it, uh, we can take, uh, we can give. Me, but uh, it helps. And uh, cash app too. They finna get a cash app too. Yeah, shit. We gonna get all that. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever. Cash app too. Um, but yeah. Thanks again for watching. Yeah. Urban Politician TV is Ant. Y'all yeah, know what it you. is. Uh, check them out. Appreciate y'all watching. Catch y'all next time. So stay on your pivot, boss player tactics. We politically inclined. They politically inclined, man. You yeah. know what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? We coming. Already. Catch y'all next time. Peace. Texas nigga got to go and get it. No side nigga and you know I'm really with it. Mind on the ditch and motherfuck these bitches. All about my cash here. Yeah, that's my riches. 
old school shimmies and we set them on benches. Mike do lax on swinger pulled up. Get the damn parking lot, niggas know what's up. Nigga like me and I keep the Glock tucked. Nigga get cash, bad bitches with big ass on the grind. Every day I'm a mash in the game. A nigga gon' really last. Get the paper, motherfucker hater. I'm from Houston, Texas, but I'm ballin' like the Lakers. Man, fuck that, man, I'm ballin' like the Rockets. Every day in the mall, gallery of shopping, hitting even markets, and I got all the options. Balenciaga rocket, maybe Alexander. Nigga like this, I don't eat panda. Hit Benny Hunter, ride through.